I'd like to show you how to use the custom punch out system at the Game Crafter. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, but there are some uh, simple things that you might slip up on, so let's just go through the whole process. Uh, first, like anything else, you're going to create a game, or maybe you already have a game. In my case, I don't, so I'm going to create one. I'm going to just label this one uh, Custom Punch Out uh, just because uh, I want to be able to find it easier. Um, so that's that. Uh, and then I'm going to go into the small punch outs here. Uh, and do custom small punch out. Now like with anything that you're going to cut on a laser, you're going to want to enable UV coating so that you don't have any uh, scorch marks that you can't wipe off. That's very important. Um, and now we've got to upload some images, but we've got to have some art for that. So I've got this guy in Illustrator. Uh, I've also uh, downloaded the, um, uh, the, the template from the game crafter for the custom small punch out um, and uh, I need to bring him into that so I'm gonna go ahead I've created another layer here to uh, to put him in I, I don't want to do anything with this uh, template because I'm gonna have to delete that later so I'm gonna put him in his own layer um, I gotta resize him here now it's important that I resize him to fit the template uh, and let me explain why. Uh, so there, normally the, you would see a red line kind of showing you where the cut line is, but we are the ones defining the cut line in this case when we're, you know, making our sp uh, our custom punch out. So there is no red line here. Uh, however, the outside of this box is the outside of the slug. Uh, and for this custom small punch out, there are 10 slugs on a sheet, so I could have 10 of these on a sheet if I wanted to, or I could have, you know, because of mix and match, I could have, you know, this monster and some uh, chits or something along those lines. Um, now, I want to rename this layer. I'm going to name this uh, face, uh, and I also, I need to um, duplicate him. I'm going to go ahead and create a another layer uh, called back. Let's go back to the face and uh, let's um, talk about the borders just a bit. Now, I've, I've resized him to be inside uh, the blue border right here. So we've got the blue dotted line and a blue dotted line over here. And I've pushed him in quite a ways here because my cut line is actually gonna go outside. I wanna make sure I don't cut off his fingers or anything. So my cut line is actually gonna end up out here. And ideally, you want your cut line to be inside the blue uh, dotted line as well. So that's why I've resized him to that size. Uh, anyway, so uh, go ahead. Let's go back to what I was doing. Now it looks like he's got a back. Uh, he's facing two different directions. So if I turn off the back, you can see the face. If I turn on, the, you know, back and forth like this. So uh, now we've got a guy. I can see what direction he is facing. So that's pretty cool. Uh, obviously, we also need to uh, create a cut line. So I'm going to lock the back. I'm going to create another layer here uh, and call that one cut. Uh, and now when you do this, I've hidden the back. I'm going to trace around the face. Uh, the game crafter is expecting you to uh, create a cut line that traces around the face of the object. And it will automatically mirror it for the back. So um, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Let's see here. We want no fill. Uh, and I'm going to go with a red cut line, although the color is not really relevant here. Just easier to see where I'm cutting. Uh, I'm going to use the pencil tool again. Uh, so we'll go up here. And I want to give this wide berth. I want to make sure I'm not cutting off any fingers or anything like that. So I'm going to give him wide berth and uh, just kind of trace around um, generally his uh, shape. Uh, so I'm going around here. Again, giving wide berth, don't want to cut off any fingers. Don't want to get outside the blue line either though. So going like this, up around his horns, uh, around his head, around the horn again, come down here and back around his hand. Um, okay, so I've got this pattern traced out. Uh, now, what you want to do is you want to go to object path join again and make that all one big shape. Now. The reason we want to use a, a full shape is so that we can actually use um, the Pathfinder um, to uh, start dividing this object up into multiple pieces. So 
why do we want to do that? Why do we want to divide this object? Um, well, let me hide these layers right here, and you'll see uh, the template says, to prevent the cut pieces from falling out of the slug, all cut lines must have at least two nicks. A nick is a break in the cut line that keeps uh, the piece attached to the slug. The recommended size for this is 0 0.01 inches. Um, so, uh, if we just had the cut line here, uh, this, uh, you know, the monster piece would uh, inevitably just fall out of the slug, which may or may not be a big deal um, if it's a really big piece like he is, but if it's a small piece, it can actually fall down into the machinery and be lost. And so, uh, if you value the game components that you're asking us to cut out for you, then make sure you put nicks in here so that none of the pieces fall out into the machine and get lost. Uh, if they fall out, we're not going to go digging for them. They will not end up in your game. So just put in nicks. Now, how do you go about doing that? Um, it's actually pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and turn off everything that is not the cut line to make this really easy to see. So here's our cut line. Uh, I'm going to blow it up a little bit here. Uh, and what I want to do is create a box. Uh, we'll do 3 inches by 0.01 inches. Again, this is uh, so that we can build our um, nicks into this thing. Um, I'll just change the color. This isn't technically necessary, but I'm going to change the color just so you can see that we've got uh, our box here that we created. And I'll change the uh, line weight on the box too, just to make it uh, clear that it is a box. Uh, so we've got our box here that is intersecting uh, with uh, the um, uh, shape, uh, and then we also, uh, you know, we have those lines. And then I need to, what I need to do is use uh, something like the Pathfinder tool, uh, or uh, I can go up to Object and uh, Path, Divide Objects Below. And so what that did is it just cut this thing into three pieces. So there's this piece here, a really thin piece down here, uh, and I'll just go ahead and um, use my direct selection tool and highlight that, and um, you can see there's this is a piece in the middle there. Um, and then we've also got the third piece up here. Uh, but we also, I want to put more than just two nicks into this thing, it's kind of a big object, so I want to put a nick on the top and the bottom as well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that again, but I'm going to reverse it. Uh, we'll go with 0.01 on the top, 3 inches on the bottom for the height. Uh, and again, we're just going to put that right through here. Uh, and I'm going to go um, object, uh, and then we we'll go to path, and divide objects below. Okay, so now we've uh, got our four quadrants of our guy here, uh, plus we have all these little pieces in the middle. Uh, so now I'm going to just show you kind of how you can do this with the direct selection tool. Actually, let's uh, highlight these. Let's change it to a uh, thinner, though, border so it's more easy to kind of see where the separations are happening. Uh, so now we've, we've got this division that's built in here. And if we use our direct selection tool, we can actually go in and highlight just that piece right there. Uh, so I want to delete just that piece. Um, and we'll delete these other lines out of here in just a minute, but I want to get rid of that little piece there. Uh, and we'll zoom in um, up here at the top. Uh, and I will click that and delete that little piece. And then we'll come over here and uh, we'll get rid of uh, this little piece here. Uh, and again, we'll come back down to the bottom here um, and get rid of this little piece here. So now we've created our nicks uh, that will hold the whole thing into position. Uh, so now, because we don't want to get this, get our monster divided into four sections, let's go ahead and delete uh, that piece as well. So now, uh, as you can see, we still have our outline of our monster, but there are these little, um, these little bitty nicks in uh, along the lines there. So we're ready to go with our cut. Um, and we have our monster here. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now that we have all the pieces that we need, I can get rid of the template layer. Don't need that anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that out of there. Uh, I probably want to save my file at this point. Uh, so I'm going to save this as monster.illustrator. Um, there we go. So I've got my file 
all ready to rock and roll, but I need to divide it into its component parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the cut layer. Uh, we don't need to see that when we export. So I'm gonna export the face. Uh, we'll go up to export. Uh, I'm gonna hit use artboards here and I'm gonna name it monster face. Uh, hit export and uh, go ahead and export it as 300 DPI. That's good. Uh, now I'll turn off the face, turn on the back, do the same thing for that. So we'll go up to export here, uh, hit use artboards, monster dash back, like that. Okay, so we've got our back out now. Uh, and now the funky thing is we cannot export uh, the SVG file while we still have these in here because it will, uh, you can't have, even though they were, they're hidden, they will show up in the file uh, and ruin the cut lines. So uh, what we need to do here is actually delete each of the back and the face so that the only thing left in this file is our cut line. Uh, so now that we have that, we can go up to uh, there, file save as, I'm gonna go to SVG, uh, use artboards, and monster.svg is fine. We'll go ahead and hit save. Uh, and now we have our um, cut file saved out as an SVG file and it does not include the images. So now we're ready to go back to the game crafter here and uh, let's uh, upload our files. So I'm going to go ahead and upload my face. Got that. And there we go. Now let's click on this one and we'll upload the back. All right, so now we've got our face and our back. And now let's go ahead and attach the cut file that we want to use here. Um, okay, so now the system is asking us what is the DPI of the export. Uh, different programs use different um, uh, what are called user units. You might think of them as pixels. Um, and so this is just uh, how long is each pixel or user unit, or how many of them are in an inch. Um, in the case of uh, Inkscape, it's actually 25% longer than Illustrator. They use 90 user units in an inch. Uh, so uh, in this case, we're using Illustrator, so I'll type in 72 here. But if I was using Inkscape, I'd put in 90. If I was using a different program, I'd have to find out how many user units or pixels there are in an inch in that program when it exports to SVG. Uh, so we said 72 here. Uh, so we've uploaded it. There's our cut file. Uh, so now I want to proof and you know it's showing there and you can see the little nicks in there where it's going to leave uh, a little bit of material behind so that it doesn't fall out. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and approve that one and you can see that it reversed the image here so that it matches the contours of the image even though the image is reversed. So I'm going to go ahead and approve that one and now it's just like anything else on the Game Crafter. If I want to set a quantity I want four of these monsters, so I just go ahead and set quantity, and I'm done. Um, I can just order this as part of a normal game like anything else. So that's it.